have questions. Questions like, why is it called a building if it's already built? Why is there no egg in eggplant? And do penguins have knees? But some questions are more important than others. This past Easter, we gave a survey to find your most asked questions. Questions like, how do I hear God's voice? How can I deal with difficult people? What does the Bible say about forgiveness and heaven? And what's the answer for all of my stress? Every week, we're gonna answer your most asked questions and discover God's best plan, because you asked for it. We're starting a new series called You Asked For It. And on Easter, if you remember, uh, we passed out surveys and we asked you several questions, but one of the questions was uh, what you wanted to hear, what sermon topic that would most um, impact you, the things that you're going through in your own personal life, and what was uh, those things that you would like to hear. So we compiled all the numbers and came up with the top five sermon titles uh, that we're going to be going over in the next uh, five weeks in October. And it's kind of interesting if you think about it, Jesus oftentimes, uh, his sermons were birthed out of the questions from the crowds. And so this is kind of the idea behind you ask for it. We want to hear what it is that you're going through and make sure that these biblical truths can apply in your life. And so one of the top, by far and away, the most requested sermon topic from teenagers all the way through to those that are on the latter end of the years of their life, the number one thing that most of you put down is the thing that you deal with on a pretty continual basis is stress. Stress. You say that you are going through stress. And so I was kind of doing some research on this and and there was a new um, um, study that came out from the American Psychological uh, Association. And uh, this is what they found. That 35% of Americans report that they are experiencing more stress now than they did last year. So 35% of you are experiencing more stress now than you did last year. That stress is a very difficult part of your life. It's something that you kind of carry with you. And then I found this fascinating. In this same report, um, it shared this statistic. It said that 24% of Americans report having extreme stress levels. So they asked them out of a, a, a series of 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest, and 10 being extreme high stress. 24% of Americans said that they experience 8, 9s, or 10s on a daily basis. That's extreme stress. That's extreme pressure that people had. And so then I was beginning to kind of think through, and I looked at this survey, and it compiled the top stress issues that people face here in the United States. And so uh, what would you guess would be the top stress issue in America? Uh, I heard it, money is the top number one stress issue by far because many of you are struggling with debt issues, you're struggling with trying to meet your bill obligations and writing out those checks or doing it online or whatever and trying to pay those bills month after month and seemingly not finding a way out and so that crushing debt every single day as you walk through life and as you're working with your spouse or maybe by yourself, trying to pay off that debt is really, really difficult. And you think about kids in college and you think about paying off the car and the house and maybe you're just in an apartment and you're just trying to make it uh, through the week so that you can get that next paycheck so that it can carry you through. Money is a huge issue. And then another top stress issue from this article was health. The health issues that we face in life. It creates this stress in our hearts and in our minds. And I would say even in our spirits. And I would say it this way. The, probably the main reason why we struggle with stress when it comes to health issues is because you come to find out that you can't control everything in your life. 
Is that anybody, you know what I'm talking about? You can kind of manage everything else, but when it comes to your body and you get that unexpected call from the doctor, you do a checkup and something comes back and there's nothing you can do about it and instantly you have this stress level that just rises to the top. Well, there's other issues as well. So they talked about work issue. Anybody have a hard boss that they have to work for or grumpy people that you have to be around and that just creates the stress level just even more difficult? Right, if these young kids are raising in their hands at school. It's like, it is so stressful. I get that. Uh, another issue is that people um, uh, had uh, struggles with, and, and some of you can probably identify, being married was a very stressful thing. So you may be sitting next to someone that's causing you a lot of stress right now. It's going to be okay. We're going to talk about that a little bit as well. Uh, yeah. And, and then uh, another one was that not only were people struggling with being married, but, and that was a major stress issue in their life, but, uh, but those uh, were stressed in their lives because they were not married. Uh, and that's what caused stress in their lives. And, uh, and, then, uh, and, so the, and then finally, we have, what other ones do we have here? Can I give the next one? Parenting issues. Anybody have any parents? I was doing something with my kids this week, okay, that, we do, that I do uh, almost every day as I, uh, kids come home from school. I'm sitting down with them, and I'm doing homework with them. Can any of you identify this? And so now they're in the fifth grade, so they've kind of progressed in their school studies. Like when it's in kindergarten, oh, it's a letter A. It's a letter B. But now it's the fifth grade, and they're doing all of this math work, and I'm thinking to myself, I I don't remember how to do that. And my stress level is rising. And they're saying, Dad, you have to do it that way. And I'm like, no, I don't think so. You have to do it that way. I Google it, and they were right. I was wrong. And that creates some stress in my life. Uh, anybody ever go shopping with their kids in, the, in the, the department store or whatever it is, and you try to get past the toy aisle without creating major meltdown? Yeah, these are big issues. And then finally, I think one of the most difficult ones that we all struggle with in terms of stress is Donald and Hillary. <laughs> Anybody have any stress issues about our country and where things are going and your stress level just kind of raises to the roof? Yeah, okay. Well, that's where we find ourselves. Hey, on a side note, uh, here's what we're going to be doing as a church. Every Sunday between now and the election, it's about 40 days between now and the election, on Sunday morning, we're going to pray for the United States. We're going to ask God's hand of blessing to come on our country. And, uh, you know, we find ourselves in a really interesting situation because here at Cross Points, we have Democrats and Republicans and Independents, and we all gather together, and we're all trying to discover, God, what is it that you want for the United States? And I would hope that everyone here would say we want revival to take place in the United States. That we want good quality leaders in the United States. And only God knows really who it is that should lead this country from our present all the way down to those that are in local office. And so uh, what we're going to do is that on your app, if you have a Cross Points Church app, you'll find at the very bottom to the right, there is an icon that says Fast With Us. If you click that icon, it will take you to a page on our website. It's crosspointschurch.com slash pray. You can also go there as well. And I have uh, uploaded for each one of you a digital copy of Grace to America or written by... Um, uh, Dick Eastman, who is the president of Every Home for Christ. And it's a 40-day prayer guide. And, it's, and we're not praying for specific candidates. We're praying for the United States of America that God's grace would be shed on us in a really powerful way. And so if you want to join with us through that over the next 40 days, you can do that and look through that. And so uh, it's exciting because Dick Eastman, who is the president of Every Home for Christ, is actually going to be speaking here at at cross points during our missions conference. So I'm super excited about that. He is one of these guys that um, has started a movement of, of seeing uh, the Word of God come into the home of every person on planet Earth. Uh, they've literally hit every country. Uh, they haven't hit every home yet, but man, they've made major strides. And so he's going to be coming and speaking here at Cross Points in November. And so I thought it would be great for us to walk through this prayer guide that he's put together. So this morning, we're going to go ahead and pray. So if you join with me in prayer, today's focus is on forgiveness. We're going to stand instead for our country and we're going to ask God to forgive us. So just join with me as you bow your heads and pray. 
Father, we come before you on behalf of our nation. And we ask, O oh God, that you would forgive us. Lord, forgive us for the wickedness in our land. Forgive us for going astray from your laws and from your ways. God, I pray that you would forgive us for uh, the church and, and for the, the lack that we have done in the United States. Lord, for not standing up and being stronger in certain areas, for not speaking the truth. Uh, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that your forgiveness would flow in our country. God, we pray that we would turn from our wicked ways, that we would seek your face, O oh God, that as a country, O oh God, that you would bring revival in this place, that you would turn the hearts of those here in America back to you. God, we pray, Jesus, that your spirit would descend upon our nation, and we pray, God, for the elections and, and from the president all the way on down, Lord, to senators and congressmen. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that your kingdom would come, that your will would be done. God, give us righteous men and women, Lord, who would be able to lead this country, Lord, in paths of righteousness, God, for your name's sake. Uh, Lord, we're asking, oh God, we've fallen short in so many areas, but God, would you offer and issue forgiveness as we stand in place of our country. God, we thank you for the United States of America. We ask that you would bless it, that your grace would shine upon us, that we would be a beacon of light and hope to the world. In Jesus' name, and everyone that agreed with that said, amen. 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 So again, if you want to do that, we would love to have you follow through with us on the app. Well, today, we're going to talk a little bit about stress and all the issues that go with that. And there's this uh, passage of scripture out of Matthew chapter 14 that is really fascinating because how many of you know sometimes in your life stress happens as a result of something that comes out of the blue? It's unexpected. Sometimes the stress that we face is unexpected. It comes out of the blue. It, it arises in places than which we least expect. And this is what we find in Matthew chapter 14 as we begin to kind of read the background of the story. Uh, the gospel writer goes in in Matthew 14 verse 22 and he says this, immediately after this, Jesus insisted, can you say insisted for me? And Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. Okay, stop right there just for a second. So Jesus insisted that the disciples get into the boat. Well, let me give you some background real quick. Jesus and the disciples had just had an amazing day of ministry. If you may remember, Jesus had taken a few loaves and a few fish, blessed them, and fed 5,000 men plus some women and children along with it. So it was a huge party out in the desert, and they're working and praying and feasting and laughing and just having a great time all day long. And so here we find them kind of at the end of the evening, so to speak. And Jesus, as they find themselves on the lake, uh, they, they, Jesus says, I want you to get into the boat, and, and I want you to take off. So if you get the picture with me, how many of you have ever been at a dinner party or maybe you've hosted a party or had people in your house and there are some guests that just don't want to leave? Anybody ever been there before? And you're just, you're kind of looking at your watch and your wife is giving you that evil look like, get them out of our house, We're like right now because I'm done, right? And so this is kind of where Jesus finds himself with all these people and the disciples too. And so Jesus is like, listen, I want you guys to go. I'll take care of the crowd. You get across the lake, right? So this is, this is kind of what's taking place. So the, the, the Sea of Galilee or the Lake of Galilee is, is not just some little lake. I mean, it's, it's like the size of Washington, D.C., okay? It's like, it's like uh, you know, 13 to 15 miles in length and about eight miles across. I mean, it's, a, it's not just your little pond. It's a big lake. And Jesus is telling them, I want you to get in the boat. I want you to go to the other side. I'll take care of the people. Okay? So that's what's taking place. And they've had this great day of ministry. And so the disciples, I think, we don't read it in the text, but I think they're a little reluctant to get in the boat. But they get in the boat nonetheless. And verse number 23 says this, after sending them home, he, that's Jesus, went up into the hills by himself to pray, and night fell while he was there alone. 
Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting the heavy waves. So Jesus, I want you to think this through just for a second. Jesus insists that they get in the boat, number one. Number two, Jesus goes up into the hills by himself alone to pray. And then the disciples find themselves out in the lake, in the sea, all by themselves with the winds and the waves. And things are getting really dicey on the sea. Think about that just for a second. Let that sink in. Jesus sent them. He insisted that they go on into the lake. Now, I want you to think about this just for a second. Jesus, being fully God and fully man, he knew where he was sending them. He was sending them into the midst of the storm. Sometimes Jesus is going to send you into difficult places. He's going to send you into dangers and difficulties and potential disasters. Did you know that? Let that sink in just for a second. Sometimes Jesus is going to insist that you get into a boat and cross the other side of the lake in your own life. And it's going to be filled with dangers and difficulties and potential disasters. And sometimes we don't want to necessarily hear that in life. That life sometimes is really challenging. That it's difficult. And the disciples, as they find themselves in the boat and the winds and the waves are crashing and beating upon them, I was thinking to myself, that's where many of you find yourself today. That you find yourself in a boat where you feel like Jesus has maybe abandoned you and sent you away and he's not there and you're struggling with the wind and the storm and the waves and everything is crashing about you and your stress, your level, stress level is not just a little bit of stress, it's extreme stress and you're trying to figure out how to manage life and you're trying to row and get to where you need to go at the same time and it's really challenging. Anybody ever feel like that in life? And you just feel a little bit overwhelmed. This is what these disciples felt like and I'm, I was thinking about this uh, with our church. Um, I've talked with numbers of you over the course of the last several months and there are some extreme stress situations that many of you are dealing with. Uh, I've talked with a a, a few couples in our church who their spouse is dealing with this, with cancer, and dealing with the real possibility that they might not make it. And that's a stressful thing. They've seen doctors, and doctors have no answers, and you see your loved one slowly deteriorating kind of day after day. That's extreme stress. That's the wind and the waves kind of coming into your life and not knowing what to do about it. I've, I've talked with several others in our church that, that are experiencing some lawsuit issues in their lives. I mean extreme lawsuits where they have the potential to lose everything that they have. And let me tell you, it's like you're in a boat and you're saying, Jesus, where are you? What's going on? And some of you are experiencing the, the, the issues of a relational dynamics that are just at the edge. And you feel ripped apart and not quite sure how to handle life. And this is exactly what the disciples felt like. They were wondering where Jesus was and what he was doing. And, and, and all they could see around them was blackness and darkness and the strong wind and the heavy waves of life. And And in your own way, I'm sure many of you kind of sense the same thing when it comes to financial pressures and difficulties. And and we could list all of the different things, all the deadlines that have to come day in and day out and performance issues with your boss and and the expectation levels that people have about you and how to live up to that. And and all of those things continue to build in your heart and your life. And, and, And the disciples, as they're in this boat, they can't see anything around them. It's It's challenging. It's difficult. And so as the the narrative continues here, it says at about 3 o'clock in the morning. Now think about that. We think that probably they left shore around 7 o'clock at night. And so here they are now at 3 o'clock in the morning and they're still rowing. And it should have only taken them a couple hours to get across the other side. But now it's been like 8 or 9 hours and they're still rowing and they're not across. So this is not just some trial that just kind of took place for a short term and then it just kind of ended. No, I mean this was 8 or 9 hours that they're rowing out there. And it says at 3 o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them. And he was walking on the water. 
And when the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. Now, I don't know about you, but if it was 3 o'clock in the morning for me and I'm seeing some figure go across the ocean walking and I've never seen anything before, I would be a little bit afraid to anybody be loopy at about 3 o'clock in the morning as well. And you're kind of figuring what just happened, what's going by as Jesus kind of floats by. And in one passage of the gospel in this kind of uh, narrative, uh, another writer says that Jesus intended to pass by them. And he was just kind of walking on through the storm as the disciples are struggling, trying to get across the other side. Anybody ever feel like Jesus just kind of tends to maybe want to go by you and you're kind of like, where are you? God, where are you? I don't sense you. I don't feel you. And Jesus is walking on by. But as the disciples, as they see him walking on the water, they were terrified. And in their fear, they cried, it's a ghost. It's a ghost. Now, these are fishermen. These are guys who grew up on the lake. These are guys who were hardened sea fishermen. And they're seeing this out of the storm and out of their eyes. And they're all looking and pointing and shouting and fearful. And and it's a crazy moment in their lives. Sometimes we can feel like things are so much out of control that the storms of life are so overwhelming. And and this is what I would have to say, and most of you probably don't want to hear it. And maybe a lot of preachers don't have to say this, but today I want to say this, that life is difficult. Life is hard. Jesus put it this way. He said, here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. Boy, aren't you glad you came to church today? We're just going to be filled with trials and sorrows. Man, I can just really, just really get into that. Just let me, just let that sink in. But this is what Jesus said. You're going to have trials and sorrows. You're going to have difficulties in life. You're going to have pressure. You're going to have stress. How are you going to deal with it? That's what we're trying to answer this morning. How are we going to deal with that? And so Jesus speaks to these disciples as they're walking along. As he's walking along, as he's looking like a ghost, and he's walking along. But Jesus spoke to them, to the disciples at once, and he said, don't be afraid. And if I could speak to you today and really kind of get into I'm trying to preach here today. Don't be afraid. Wherever you are, don't be afraid. Jesus says, take courage. I am here. And in the Greek, it's even more powerful because that here really shouldn't be translated. Jesus says to the disciples, I am. And if you can remember and recall, Jesus is referring back to Exodus where Moses encounters God in the burning bush. And he says, I am who I am. Jesus on the ocean of the storms of life to you. And he says, I am that I am. I took the children of Israel out of Egypt through water on dry land. I closed the mouths of the lions. I mean, these are the things that God did for his children. How much more will he do for you as well? In the storm of your life, God says, I am that I am. You see, Jesus, uh, as I had reread that passage in, in, in John See, Jesus says, you're going to have many sorrows, and let's read that. He says, here on earth, you're going to have many trials, and you're going to have sorrows, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. You see, we can live with courage today, because Jesus has overcome the world, because Jesus stands and he says, I am who I am. I've been, and I always have been, and I am right now, and I will be, and I always will be, and you can count on me, so take Take courage. I am is here. In your life, in your circumstance, and in your situation, I want you to understand this morning that the great I am is right there with you. And he's not walking by. If you simply cry out to him today and say, Jesus, help me. See, he's waiting for you to cry out to him. They saw a ghost and they said, God, save us. Jesus steps right up immediately. See, 
If you want to live a stress-free life, If you want to live a life in which your stress is low, if you can understand this one biblical principle, and it's simply this, you need to understand that God is with you in the midst of the trial. Sometimes he doesn't take you out of the trial. He's going to take you through the trial. And what the end of that trial looks like, we don't really know. But God is with you. You see, your trial may end in death. It may. It might not end the way that you expect it, but I promise you this, God will be with you. And if we have the attitude of heaven, if we have the perspective that this life is temporary, this life is filled with sorrow and difficulties, but if we recognize that Jesus is with me in the middle of it, and whether he saves me or whether he takes me home, either way, I can trust in him. See, that's a realistic perspective of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He didn't come just to make you happy. He came to be with you and to give you power and authority on earth so that you could be and experience his presence in your life. That's that's what the gospel is. I'm not trying to talk to you today just to sugarcoat things. God wants to be with you in the middle of the trial. But see, Jesus doesn't leave you just there. And I've got just a few minutes left. But Jesus doesn't want you just to live a stress-free life. He doesn't want you just to live some comfortable life. You see, Jesus is looking for something more from you. It's something that Peter did that really is the point of this passage. In Matthew chapter 14, as the story continues, Peter calls out to him and says, Lord, if it's really you, if it's really you, tell me to come to you so that I can walk on the water. You see, Jesus, I want to make sure you guys catch this. Sometimes Jesus takes you into the difficulties of life. But Jesus is waiting for you so that you can ask him to take you into the difficulties of life. So that you don't have to live a stress-free life, but that you can say, God, call me out onto the water. God, call me out into the difficult places of life. God, call me into places where I can be an example of your goodness and your grace to those around me. You see, Peter was like, God, I want to go into the storm. I don't want to be in the boat. I want to be where you are. How many of you know this, that you are more safe on the storm, on the ocean, where the winds and the waves are pounding in the middle of the sea, you're safer there than you are in a boat where you feel comfortable and controlled without him. You can live a life of luxury and live in a house that you think is so comfortable and it would be the worst place possible for you to be. Or you can say, God, I want to be right where you are. It's better to be in the storm where Jesus is than to be in a house of luxury where he isn't. And I guess that's the question that I have for some of you. Some of you are trying to maintain a sense of security in your life. And God is speaking to you and saying, listen, let go. Trust me. Have faith in me. Have confidence in me. You see, when we can get to that level of faith and confidence and trust, it's then that your stress level is going to go down. Because you can say, everything I have and all that I am, it belongs to you. And no matter what comes my way, I'm going to trust in you. Whether in life or whether in death, whether in heartache or pain or joy, God, I'm going to trust you. And that's the reality of the gospel. You see, when... Peter then saw the strong wind and the waves. He was terrified. So he was there right where Jesus was, but he began to look around. He got his eyes off Jesus. And probably those of you that are believers, you've heard this a million times. But when we get our eyes off of Jesus, when we lose sight of eternity, when we lose sight of what God has for us, then all we can begin to see is the storm and the waves around us. And God wants you to keep your eyes fixed on him. Peter was so terrified in the Greek there, it says that he screamed out, save me, save me, he shouted or he screamed. And then it says Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him and said, you have so little faith. Why did you doubt me? And today, 
I want to encourage you, have faith in Christ. Don't doubt him. No matter what season of life you find yourself in, no matter what major stress that you have going on in your life, whether it's parenting issues or money or maybe it's the United States of America or, or maybe it's a health issue, whatever it may be, I want you to be able to have great faith in God because he wants to save you. He wants to uphold you. He is the great I am and he's for you and he wants you to know his presence and his peace. Would you close your eyes this morning? There may be some of you here today and you've been struggling with stress and because you haven't been able to control it and manage it, your, your levels of stress have just kind of gone through the roof. Maybe you're trying to manage things in your life and it's gotten out of control. And today, I, I want to pray for you that are experiencing some stress today. The great I am wants to come into your life. He wants to give you his peace. He wants you to take courage because he's overcome the world. If that's you today, just as we can have our eyes closed and our head bowed, I want to pray for many of you today that are, that are struggling with that. If you're struggling with some stress in your life today, would you just lift your hand and allow me to pray for you? Allow the great I am. Don't be shy. Just raise your hand and say, yeah, okay, I've seen all those hands go across. Yeah. God, you see these hands that are lifted high as they're acknowledging that they're, they're under some, some intense stress in their life. And I pray that you would be the great I am in their circumstance and situation. Lord, from health issues to work issues, to legal issues, to issues of family and relationships. God, I pray that you would show yourself strong on their behalf. God, I pray that we would trust you with all that we are and all that we have. God, I pray that they would have a better perspective that whether in death or in life, God, that you're right there with them. God, I pray that you would call them out under the water and that you would be there with them and encourage them and bless them. God, may they experience your peace today as they trust you with their heart, as they look to you for strength. God, fill them with your presence, I pray. In Jesus' name. Would you keep your eyes closed and your head bowed? And, and there may be some of you here today, you've never given your life to Jesus. You've never, never fully given your heart to him. Well, it's not an accident that you're here today. God wants to reveal himself to you in a new way. He's looking to you and he's asking you, will you come and follow me? And Jesus wants to show you a better way in life. He wants to make all things new. He wants to get rid of the old and all the mistakes and all the failures from the past. And God wants to make all things new for you. If that's you this morning, you would say, yeah, I have never given my life to Jesus. But today, man, I want to do it. I'm sick and tired of doing the old ways and the old things, today I want to give my life. If that's you, I just simply want you to raise your hand. Just, just right now, just raise your hand. I see that hand. Anybody else that would say, yes, man, I want to receive Christ into my life. I want to start over. I want to, I want to receive him and follow him all the days of my life. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's great. Amen. See those hands. Let's just keep our eyes closed. I'm just going to, I'm going to pray for you and then I'm going to encourage you that raise your hands to make your way over to the left side of the auditorium. My left, your right here in just a few moments and there'll be some people there that we're going to be able to pray with you and encourage you. But Lord, I pray for those who had their hands raised and that they would receive you into their life. They would stop trying to do things on their own. They would place their faith and confidence in you, Jesus, who died on the cross and rose for them and that gives them new life, they would turn from their old ways and follow you. God, I thank you for that. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen. Well,